and just give it to him. Because his word said he would keep you in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on him. And the reason is because you trust in him. And I thank God. Now this is our time for prayer, for our corporate prayer. And if you would come to the altar, God will hear us all wherever we are. If you're not able to come, you can sit there, but just go to the throne of grace with us as one. Go to the throne of grace with us as the people of God, because he called us. As we surrender ourselves to him, we have to surrender everything to him. Not just some things, but everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Huh. Father, as we come before the Almighty God, the God that is sovereign, the God that knows everything, and God that loves us in spite of ourselves, we thank you, God, because you're a God of mercy, you're a God of grace, and you're a God of compassion. We thank you for your faithfulness. You're faithful, God, when we're not even faithful. We just want to acknowledge you this morning. We just want to let you know how much we love you, how much you have continued to just bring us up to that love as you pour your love down in our hearts. Oh, God, we bless your name right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing because nothing is done without you, Lord. And God, as we come, thank you, thank you, can't thank you enough. We're so grateful, 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 grateful for all that you're doing. Oh God, don't let us look back, but to look forward in you, because you are our strong tower. You are our leaning post. God, you are our shelter and our protector. God, we know that you are our shepherd, and we shall not be in want. And we just want to praise you, exalt you today. You said if I be lifted up, I would draw all men. God, we need a drawing this morning. Draw us closer to the cross, Father. And if we stand in the gap today, Lord, move anything that is not up here. Continue to just bless us, Lord. Continue to move in our hearts and minds as we pour out ourselves to you, Lord. And let nothing be left behind. Because we didn't do this without you, God. We're nothing without you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, for the precious blood that he shed for us.
and also uh, Brother Eddie F uh, Sorrow. And you can also see me. So we can uh, coordinate, get it together, and go up and fellowship one with another. And uh, just have a good time in the Lord. Amen? Amen, Amen. Amen man.
come forward. Just come on and give him some praise. You know, but that's what we're for. You're not here to say to me, you came here to get what God has for you. Hallelujah. You can come here to see each other, but you came to get what God has for you. It's in the house. Everything you need is in the house. Corinthians 10, 
1 through 6. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you. I, Paul, who am timid, when face to face with you, but bold towards you went away. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be for some people who think that we live by the standards of the world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. Then we turn to Ephesians. 6, 10 through 17. Ephesians 6, 10 through 17. Amen. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for this word that is coming forth. God, we thank you that this word will help us in our daily living. God, we give you glory for what you are about to say and what you are about to do. God, I decrease that you increase, God. You say what you want to say. You do what you want to do. We give you free reign, God, to have your way. Lord, and we'll forever give you praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor intently and say, get dressed. Put on your war clothes. Put your war clothes on. Put your war clothes on. Hallelujah. This is serious, y'all. We're in a serious time. We are in a war. Spiritual war. It hasn't just begun because it's been going on for a long time. And we must come to the realization that we are and have been in this for some time. So much is going on in this world. Just this week alone, if we could look around us, sister was having a moment of silence for the shooting. Yeah. You know, the shooting, there's been shootings in Mississippi, there's been shootings in Ohio. Yeah. Just this morning, yeah. taking lives. Yeah. Lives that didn't even have a chance. Yeah. And we pray that they were they knew the Lord that they were saved. But we just got to get dressed. We have to pray. We have to fast. We have to cry out to our God. 
on behalf of this nation, on behalf of our families, yes. on behalf of our loved ones. The young man shoots up and kills 13 in Texas. You know, this morning in Ohio, this grunt uh, employee killed two co workers in Mississippi. A cliff just collapsed this week in Encinitas. You just never know what's going to happen. But the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that we have life and have it more abundantly. There's been attacks. You know, there's, there's attacks. Let's be real. It's attacks. There's attacks on races. Certain races, there's attacks on the church. You know, the enemy going to come and try to paint the picture that the church is not what it's supposed to be. Yeah. But you know, we have the authority to rise up yeah. in the things that God has for us. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Attacks on the body of Christ. But the body has been bruised enough it has been attacked enough and beaten enough when Jesus went to the cross. When his body went to the cross. And we represent the kingdom of God. But we have to get dressed, saints. Even the scripture says he's coming for a bride. A bride needs to be dressed properly. For her king. You know, those are, there's a, some retired people in here. And <laughs> praise God. But there's some that go to work every day. And when you get up, you have a routine, most of you. You get up, whether you work in the evening, the morning, or whatever, get prepared for work, take a shower. If not the night before, you wash your face, brush your teeth, comb your hair, put your clothes on. Now suppose you wake up and you decide to go to work just like you woke up. That's going to be some issues, y'all. That's going to be some issues. You didn't comb your hair, you didn't brush your teeth. Your hair might be sticking to fall over your head. There's going to be some problems. Because you went out without getting dressed. Proper. You might be talked about. If you go into work like that, you might be reprimanded. You might be sent home. Because there's a dress code. And God has given us a dress code. God has given us a dress code. You didn't prepare yourself for all that stuff that's coming at you because you weren't dressed properly. Right, right. Paul was speaking to the churches. He was speaking to the church of Corinth. He was speaking to Ephesus. Letting them know that that, hey, this war that we're fighting is not of our flesh. He wants us to, he was telling us that, hey, we need to put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may not, you may be able to stand. And having done all to stand, you must stand. When everything else is going crazy, you got to stand. But he tells us what we need to put on daily. How we need to dress ourselves. You know, if you don't put on that helmet, you got things going on in the mind. If you don't put on that breastplate, you can easily get offended. Things can easily hurt you. 
I'm going to go back to that scripture where he says that we walk in the flesh in this earth suit. That's what it means. We walk in the flesh in this, in this earthen body. But we do not war after the flesh. We can't get out there and act crazy. Act, act, act up like folk act up. Want to punch people. Want to fight people. We can't, we can't do that. This thing is on a higher level than where we are. This is a spiritual battle. For the weapons, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. We can't fight with a carnal mind. We can't fight a spiritual battle with a carnal mind. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, I could, I could just walk around and just act like I'm the toughest person in the world. But some things that are going on in my life or around me, I can't pinpoint that with my carnal mind. I don't know how to fight that. I can't fight that demon that's coming at my child with my carnal mind. I got to get on my knees and pray. I got to lay hands on my child. declare and decree some things over them yes. that no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper and every tongue that rises in judgment shall be condemned I got to speak the word the weapons of our warfare are not calm but might do the pulling down strongholds casting down imagination and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when, dis when obedience is fulfilled. Meaning that I can't allow a lot of thoughts, a lot of things, a lot of negativity to come into my mind. I have to cast that thing down. I can't think that somebody's out to get me all the time. I can't think these crazy thoughts. I have to cast these things down. I have to pull this stuff down. Because if I don't pull it down, it's going to pull me down. I know this word is just a little different, y'all. But God is speaking that we have to be girded up. We can't continue to let the devil beat us down. We cannot continue. We have to rise up as the body of Christ. Put on the whole armor, the full armor. That means you can't just put on one piece. You can't go out halfway dressed. I know there's lots of soldiers in here. Former soldiers. Out in the real world. If they go lacking with some of their gear, then it's open, they're open for attack. Right. They're open for injury. Right. Put on the whole armor of God. Having your loins girt about with truth. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Paul was speaking to the churches. We have to fight in the spirit. We have to put on the whole armor of God, which is the belt of truth. Yes. The belt of truth is what girds us. It postures us. It's something about when you put a belt on. Y'all men know. You feel a little bit of, you know, a little strength when you put your belt on. You, you, got, a, you got a statue. You got a, a stand, a certain stand when you put your belt on. Uh -huh. And it braces you. It brings confidence. So that's one of the pieces that we have to put on. The belt of truth. When everything else is a lie, we got to keep truth around us. We got to stand in truth. 
The breastplate of righteousness, which guards your heart and keeps you in right standing with God. It keeps you from being injured. It keeps you from being wounded. It keeps you from offense. So that when somebody says something to you and it doesn't sound right, you can just say, okay, it's okay. You know, instead of, man, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm about to do, you know. I mean, they really came at me. And you stay right there. They really came at me, and I feel like I need to say something. Well, no you don't. No you don't. Because if you're dressed, it can't penetrate. It can't offend you. Feet fitted with the gospel of peace, that wherever we go, we carry the peace of God with us. Our feet are not wanting to do mischief or sow discord. Romans 10 says, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those that bring the good news. Yes, yes. If you're out telling people about Jesus, if you're out walking about your day just praising Jesus and meditating on Jesus, <coughs> you dress your feet with the gospel of peace. The shield of faith that protects us from the fiery dots of the wicked. The accusations, the persecutions, the grenades of life. Everything that the enemy tries to throw at you. You carry the shield of faith. If you leave your shield, you have no protection. This is how we should dress every morning, y'all. This is how we should dress when we go about our day. That my concentration is on God. Even though there's some crazy stuff going on around me, I'm depending on God. I'm trusting, on, I'm trusting in God. The helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. The word of God, which is quick and powerful, yes, sharper than any two-edged sword. Right. It would penetrate even in dividing soul and spirit, and it judges the thoughts and hearts of the attitudes of the heart. If we don't execute the word of God in advance, we just allow the enemy to trample over us, yes, wreaking habits in our lives. We have been given authority, y'all. Yes, we, we have the authority to speak over our situation. Yes, we can't spew out negativity. All right. yes. All right. We can't say God is good and turn around and say, I don't know. You know, I just don't know. Right. I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, you know, God is a healer. I feel so sick. I'm just a sick. I mean, yeah, we get sick. But we got to learn how to turn that thing around. And speak what the word is saying concerning us. That's what he gave us a word for. To speak those things. You know, I'm like. I'm just. Tired of the devil. I'm sick of him. I'm tired of him. If I'm gonna be sick, I'm just gonna be sick of him. And sometimes you just gotta rise up and say enough is enough. You can't have my family. You can't have my job. You can't have my house. You can't take my joy. When God says I'm healed, I'm going to believe what God said. The doctor might say, yeah, I see this right here.
but God said. Yes. And not only God said, yeah, I got to do some things for myself to make sure I'm in line with that. Yes. Yes. If I'm pre-diabetic or I'm, I have diabetes, I can't keep eating stuff. All right. All right. That's going to run my sugar crazy. I got to use some wisdom. I got to use some wisdom. He's already given us everything we need to be healed, even in this earth. But we have to utilize what he's given us. His word is life. And that more abundantly. We can't allow the enemy to just take over our minds. We have to put on the helmet of salvation. Some of us got minds that's just everywhere. I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. Stop! My mind on this, my mind on that. He said he'll keep you in perfect peace. That it was just, that's just what they just sung of you. If you keep your mind stayed on him. Perfect peace. Peace that people don't even understand, even in a storm. Peace. Be still. When Jesus was on the ship with his disciples, and there came about a storm, he was back there in the back.
He wants to prepare us. He's preparing us. He's giving us what we need for this. Christ came so that we can have peace in the time of the war. We have to have him on the inside. So that we can discern what's going on around us. You can't do this thing in your flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not calm, but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Some of us got some strongholds in our life. You might not want to admit it, but you know it's a stronghold because you wonder why I can't get past this. Why I can't get closer to God like I want to. It's because there's something there that you don't want to let go of. It's a war. It might be somebody in your life you don't want to let go of. I ain't getting no amens on that, but it's okay. It's okay. I mean, do you want more of him? It's all or nothing. You push your chips in. It's all or nothing. It's time to get dressed, y'all. Daily. Because, you know, there's somebody out there waiting on you that needs a word. And if you're not fully dressed, you're, you're over here wounded. And you can't even give them a word. You can't even leave them to Christ. They're so ready. They're, like, they're seeking something. They're looking. They, look, they're worshiping other gods. But there's something that's missing. And you have the answer. But you're not fully dressed. You don't have the word in you that they need. You don't deliver it, but you have it. Because you're so consumed with that wound. You know, that wound has got my attention. You know, it's like I got the dog with this thing. A sister just walked by you, a brother just walked by you. And you looking at your wounds. By Christ. You have been anointed by Christ. But you just have to know who you are. In Him. Get dressed. Get up and get dressed. Get up and sing songs to the Lord. Get up and just praise Him. He didn't have to do anything, but you did wake up. It didn't have to be anything extravagant. He just woke you up. Yes. And that's a blessing. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Just think about what the Lord has done for you. Yes. He has given us weapons. Yes. This is serious. I don't know much about, this, about the services. You know about you know, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Marines. <laughs> I know there's some Marines in here. Some Navy in here. But I know that they have to be on one accord. I know that as a team, they have to think, hey, we got an enemy out there. And we got to do what we got to do. We got to come together. We got to think alike. As a team, we got to pray together. We got to pray for one another. We got to look out for our sister and our brother. We got to have each other's back. But we need to get dressed. 
We need to get dressed, y'all. We can't let this, the, the cares of this world overtake us. That's right. We cannot let this, the cares of this world. You know, everything that's going on, I'm sure in those, those shootings and people going to the beach, they, just, they didn't think about none of this stuff. They didn't think all this stuff was going to happen. But you got to be ready. You got to be ready. Just like you got to be ready when Jesus comes. You got to be ready. We can't play around with this. This is serious. We can't play around with this. We can't tiptoe around the tulips. We have to have a relationship with God. It can't be in and out. It can't be a fence thing. And he loves us all. That's why he sent his son Jesus to die for us. He loves everybody in this room. Everybody. But how much do you love him? Can you give him everything? Withholding nothing? Withholding nothing? I give my all to you. I give my all to you. Hallelujah. I know this is serious, y'all. I know this this just is this is a different message. But you know what? God put this on my heart so heavy. That we are in a war. We are in war. And we have to get dressed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some of you that's, that's just got a lot on your mind. It's just like, it's just constant, constant warfare. Constant warfare in your mind. And God wants to heal. God wants to set free today. Because once he, once he heals that mind, it allows everything else to fall in place. You know, that's the seat of your emotion. Everything starts with the mind. A thought. A thought. These people that did all this stuff to these people out there shooting, it started right then. The enemy just talking to them. Yeah. You know, this is not going right for you. This is not happening for you. So you might as well just do this. You might as well just kill it all. Kill as many as you can. Do this, you know. I mean, there are voices, but we have to determine what is the voice of God. And God is not going to tell us to do anything evil and crazy. We have to, we have to get fully dressed. I just want you to close your eyes and begin to thank the Lord right now. And just receive what he has for you. Just receive. Don't fight against him. Fight for him. Fight for him. Like, this is my daily bread. This is my living water. This is what I live for. I live for him. I can't move. I can't breathe. I can't do anything aside of him. Nothing. Outside of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. There are tormented minds. There are broken hearts. There are feet that are going in places that they shouldn't go. But God, you made the pathway straight. You can stand up on your feet. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just begin to thank him. And let him know, Lord, I want to be dressed. I want to be fully dressed. Fully. I want to put on the whole armor. I want my mind to be on you. If there's somebody right now that you're dealing with some things in your mind, I just keep hearing this, just a lot of stuff going on in your mind. Just a lot of stuff, you know. Even suicide. If you're battling with suicide, just be honest. Because there's help. And it's good to talk to somebody else about it, but if you talk to Jesus, If you talk to Jesus, He will take that burden from you. Because He loves you. Your life is not your own. Your life is not your own. If you're dealing with those thoughts, please come forward. I mean, just battling in your mind. Thinking that you're not worth anything. The enemy is just wreaking havoc over your mind. If you've been wounded and you can't seem to get past it. If you've been hurt, if you've been wounded, hallelujah. The Lord wants to heal your broken heart. This is a cry, y'all. This is a cry out. This is a cry out. Because God wants us to be his soldiers. He wants us to be his warriors. Yeah. He wants us to represent him and represent him well. You know, the enemy has people out there that represent him well. The devil has people out there that just have no filter. They don't care. They don't care how they look, what they say, but we have to become bold and declare the Lord. We have to become bold. We can't be undercover Christians. Be incognito. We can't say and do everything. Hallelujah. Is there anybody that needs prayer? Any prayer? Any prayer? Any prayer? Anybody want to pray? It's okay. You know what's going on in your life. So you and God is between you and God. But He just wants us to get dressed every day, so that we can go past, uh, go about doing the Father's business. Go about doing. His business. It ain't about our business no more. It's about His business.
these are the last days.
and put out those fiery darts. Stay dressed. Let the enemy know he cannot have what is yours and what God has ordained for you. He cannot have it because God gave it to you. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. If I could pray. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for your word that it not come back void, but that it shall accomplish what you have sent it to do. Lord, we thank you for establishing us, for strengthening us, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your will be done. Lord, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for the seed that has been put out this morning. That it shall be watered and it shall bring increase. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the woman of God another hand. An awesome message from God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is doing something in the place. And thank you, Evangelist Reverend Witherspoon, for an awesome word this morning. Get ready. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good morning, Mount Mariah. Good morning. Reverend Brown. We are so excited this Sunday morning that our very own Katrina Malone has come up for membership. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. It is, we are so happy that you're here. Amen. And I, I remember seeing your card about seven weeks ago. Amen. And you kept coming. So God must be doing something in your life. Would you like to say something to the congregation this morning? I just want to say that I just thank God for being here this morning. And uh, I really feel spirit filled here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always feel like I'm so. Thank you so much for being so invited. And loving. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, and you're welcome. And we're not going to put you to work right away. You know, not today, but we will call you tomorrow. And we'll put you to work, amen. amen. Because we're out at our, at our, what was it, our picnic? Amen. She participated. Baseball game. She went to the baseball game uh, with the Pharaohs. Amen. So you made yourself a part. And thank God for you. Thank God for the word this morning. And thank God. The Bible says that, that heaven's rejoice after a soul is saved. Just one soul. So they're rejoicing in heaven right now. Thank you so much. And you may, you may have a seat. Amen. We're going to prepare for our communion this morning, and we're going to ask for our deacons uh, to come forward. I'm sorry. Our deacons and our ministers to come forward as we prepare this morning for our, for our communion. Come on, y'all. Amen. If you would, just Make yourself around to the end of the wall where you should be. Everyone is invited to participate if you are a believer for communion this morning.
most sacred days, the sacred ceremonies that we can do is to partake in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It was over 2,000 years ago that Christ came, he walked, he lived, and he died. And he died for the sins of you and me. So when we come to communion, it is such a sacred time that we participate in this. We thank God for Jesus today. Amen. Amen. Will you read?
everybody that's been missed. On the night that he was betrayed, he broke bread with his disciples. He said, this is my body. Take ye and eat. Likewise, he took the cup and he poured the cup. And they all drank from the same cup. He said, this is my blood of the new cup. Take all, drink all.
place, but not of your presence. Protect each and every one of them. Put angels around them, Lord God. My God, prepare our minds and our heart. And let us take on the whole armor of God, oh God. God, let us get dressed and ready for battle, Lord God. My God, in your word, in your way, in your will, God, have your way. Now, God, we depart from this portion of service, but not from your presence. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Greet one another in the holy love.